Please, brothers, if I can ask the brothers and sisters, please, humbly, that uh, if you have children here, wallahi, it's only of the best akhlaq, that you do your best, inshallah ta'ala, to maintain them. A lot of effort has gone into the night, and it's absolutely painful to see that it's being destroyed with you know, the uh, noise of a couple of kids. So please, inshallah ta'ala, if you have some kids here, even if it means you have to leave the building, leave for the sake of Allah, Azza wa Jal, and you'll get the full rewards, inshallah ta'ala. بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. We start first and foremost by praising the King of Kings, the Master, the Sustainer, the Creator of the seven heavens and the earth, the One who gives life, the One who takes it. Allah Azza wa Jal is the Maker. Allah Azza wa Jal is the Breaker. Allah Azza wa Jal is the One who gives, and Allah Azza wa Jal is the One who takes. We say peace and blessings upon His beloved Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, our Master, our Habib, our Teacher sallallahu alaihi wasallam. My time is short, so I get straight to it. The issue of unity is something that we all cry of. My brothers, there is a very old parable, and I love mentioning this story, and any of you that have been, you, yeah, I'm sure you've heard me say this story a number of times. And as I mention the story, I want you to, to try to live the story. And I want you, as I'm, as I'm mentioning the story to you, I want you to imagine and think about the condition of the current Ummah and where it's at today. The old parable has it that there was four bulls, three of which were black, one of which was white. And these bulls, they happened to be living together in a very dangerous environment and subhanAllah, they somehow happened to stick together and in unity they found protection and they got by, though the condition was extremely dangerous. One day, one of the black ones, the thought comes to him and he says, you know what, we're black, we're doing all right at night, we're covering, we're hiding on the darkies, we're getting by. But this white one, bro, you can see him from a million miles away, man. So I think it's best... Look at the poison. He says, I think it's best for my jama'ah that we get rid of him because he stands out. And when he stands out, we stand out, so therefore he's causing us harm. So they get together, cutting a long story short, they get together, and they, they, uh, they uh, get together and then they expel this white one. So the wolf that night is watching, he sees all of a sudden, oof, what's going on here, the white one's on his own, the three are together. He senses the disunity amongst them. So the wolf that night, he comes down to the white one, he attacks the white one, where's he going to go, bro? He's on his own. The three black ones watched. Watch their brother fall, watch their brother die, watch their brother get eaten, and they did nothing about it. So some time passes, the wolf now says, look man, there's only three of them, bro, how much can they put up with a fight? Well, one day he's feeling staunch, he comes up to the three, bridges up, puts up a bit of a fight, manages to pull one down. They were four, now they're two. And then sometime later, there's only two of them, bro. He attacks one of them, brings them down until there was only one, the one that came up with the master plan. So on the last day, khalas, the wolf is pursuing him now with full confidence, bro. Where's he gonna go, man? Until eventually he gets to him, he jumps on him, and as he starts to devour his, his teeth into his throat, the bull makes a statement. Wallahi, a statement that should be written in gold. The bull now realizing he's falling, he's dying, khalas of God. He thinks to himself and he says, That I died. That I signed my execution paper, not today. But rather I signed it the day I watched the white one get killed and I did nothing about it. That's the day I died, not now. And wallahi my brothers, this is what's happening with us everywhere you go. We're watching our brothers fall. But because he's not from my jama'ah, because he's not from my masjid, because he's not from my fiqh, alhamdulillah, he has nothing to do with me, let him go. Brother, what you don't realize is in reality what's happening. As he's falling, it's only a matter of days before you will, food, before you will soon follow him. The Prophet of Allah, he says in an amazing hadith, he gives an amazing analogy. He says, this ummah is like one body. This ummah, is like one body. He didn't say me and Abu Bakr and Umar and Khattab are one body. He didn't say me and the ten Mubashirin are one body. 
He said, this ummah is like one body. When a part of it hurts, and a part will hurt. He says, when a part of it hurts, the whole body stays up the night in sleepless nights, fighting off the infection, fighting off the pain. When a part of us is hurting, my brothers, whether it's local or international, this whole ummah should be feeling it. This is the analogy that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave about the ummah. And he says that he who is not concerned, he who is not concerned about the affairs of the Muslims, then he's not from us. He's not from us. My brother's unity is loving one another. And loving one another for the sake of Allah, not loving one another for the sake of my masjid. Not loving one another for the sake of my sheikh and my urba, right? This isn't how it works. There are differences, yes, we all know, we all agree. And if you think we're going to come to a great conclusion here tonight, you're living in Disneyland. True love is when I accept you regardless of your condition. I love you for that kalima of La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. That's unity. Our unity is in the kalima. We need to start loving for the sake of Allah and not loving for the sake of my nafs. Today, my brothers, and I believe they made a movie about it, called Friends with Benefits. Today we have what? We have friends with benefits. You see, I'm not friends with Shafi's because, well, mashallah, he's a Muslim and I love him. No, I'm his friend because he's got guns on his hands, bro. And if I ever fall into a drama, I won't know that Shafi's please, can you come help me out, bro? <laughs> but this is the truth. Wallahi, my brothers, the youth are running out. We're running and following brothers. You know what's funny? You know they're garbage. You know their environment is rubbish. You know when people drive past, they look at them in a shameful manner. But I'm prepared to hang out with them because he's a heavy in the manta and they in all money. <laughs> Wallah, I, well, it breaks my heart. Sometimes I see, I see brothers, you know, Wallah, you know that this is not his character, man. You know, bro, you don't belong in this crew. And the people he's rolling with remind him day and night, bro. They slap him around, they run a mock on him. No problem. Wallahi, no problem. As long as I can be seen with you. As long as I can roll with you. My brother, me, my sister, I mean to tell you, roll with Muhammad and his companions. Wallahi, we need to start loving for the sake of Allah. Because loving for the sake of Allah is of the greatest honor. Rasulullah says in amazing hadith, he says, there are seven, my brothers and sisters, there are seven who will be under the shade of Allah Azawajal on the day where there is no shade except His shade under His throne. What sort of a day is this? Wallahi, if I take now, if I stand here long enough, the brother's going to start writing on the piece of paper, everyone's going to start, Ya Allah, this guy's doing my head in. Khalasli minna ba, bro, all right. No, 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 he says, it's a day that's 50,000 years long. How long? 50,000 years long. He says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the sun will be one mile above your heads. One of the companions who narrates, he says, By Allah, I didn't know what Rasulullah was referring to. I didn't quite get it. Was he saying the distance of a mile, yani the actual distance of a mile? Or was he referring to the Arabs used to use the eyeliner, the one that they used to put the on, was referred to as a meal? He says, I didn't know, I didn't quite get it. Was he referring to the distance or was he referring to the span of that meal? Regardless of which one it is. He says, Allah, he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you'll be standing there, my brother. And every one of you, according to his condition, you'll be sweating. Some to your ankles, some to your knees, some to your waists, some to your necks, and some of us will be drowning in our own sweat. That day, that day there are seven who will be under the throne of Allah, under His shade. Two of which that I want to highlight here tonight, two of which, one is a young man whose heart is attached 
to the houses of Allah Azzawajal. The houses. Not my hangout. Not where my chef prays. And I'm not this and that whatsoever. But one whose heart is attached to the houses of Allah. Who's in the houses of Allah? The believers of Allah Azzawajal. He says the other category are those who love one another purely for the sake of Allah Azzawajal. Purely. Not Allah because there's a benefit. I love you sincerely for the sake of Allah Azzawajal. Allah Azzawajal will call out, Where are those who love one another for my glory? For today I will shade them on the day when there is no shade except my shade. Where are they? He says Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on that day, look, look how loving one another is continuously connected to what? That day. That day. He says, he says on that day there will be a position, a status. Imagine you're there, prophets, martyrs, messengers, Awliya. He says there will be a position of nur, seats of light, high ranks. Who is he saying this to? He's saying this to a people whom Allah, never mind what Rasulullah says about them. Allah says, I am pleased with them and they are pleased with me. So he's telling that ummah, that generation, that there will be a status on the day of judgment. There will be a position who even the prophets and messengers and the martyrs will envy. Messengers? This isn't a film Hindi or a film Turkey. I don't think I'm doing Hollywood. Sahih Hadith. He says there will be a position. Imagine a prophet is envious of a status. Imagine a messenger, imagine a martyr, a shaheed, is actually envious of someone's condition. Who are they, a Prophet of Allah? He says they are those who love one another for the sake of Allah. They are those. He says a man traveled, a man left his town and traveled to another town to visit his brother. So Allah sends down an angel. The angel comes to the man and asks, he says, where are you going? He says, well, I'm going to the next town. I'm going to visit my brother. So the angel asks, he says, why are you going there, man? Any business? Any maslaha? Do you owe him a favor? Does he owe you something? He says, love Allah. I'm going sincerely for the love of Allah Azza wa Jalla. So the angel says, he says, I am a messenger from Allah. And I have been sent down to tell you that Allah loves you for the same reason that you love him. Allah, where's this call bro? He says, none of you will enter Jannah. Not some. What did he say? None will enter Jannah until you believe. Two minutes. Until you... But is that two minutes to finish this story or finish everything? He says, none of you will truly believe until you love her. He says, none of you... He says, none of you will enter paradise until you believe. And none of you will truly believe into your love for your brother, what you love for yourself. He says, shall I not tell you something? If you do it, you will love one another. He says, give salams to one another. Sometimes we think that the solution is something huge. Sometimes we think the solution is some Amir al mumineen that's going to fall down from the heavens on the wings of the heart. No, no, no. Well, why sometimes the path to the, yani, the first step in the right direction is something as simple as smiling in the face of your brother. Giving salams to one another. Today you give salams to someone you don't know. Have you ever been in this condition? Happens to me all the time. You walk up and there's a group of brothers there. Why so much jahili, man? Even, so you walk up and, and so there's the boys and there's the crew and we're not sure and then you walk in and then it's like, oh, so then they try to act like they didn't see you and you're sort of thinking, man, do I act like I'm not seeing them as well? And then, and then you walk up and you go, Salaamu Alaikum. And then there's that awkward little bro, sorry, but you know any of us because none of us know you, man. So what's going on here? 
Look at the, look at the levels that we've reached. He says, give salams. Smile on the face of your brother. Smile. In fact, one of the signs of the day of judgment is a man will only give salam to the people that he knows. Sahaba used to, Sahaba would be on, they would be riding on animals and then a tree would divide them. They'll go around the tree, come back and give salam to one another. Hey, try that today with someone. Be like, sure, I grab my stool, I'll just with you about what's going on. <laughs> Well, look, look, look I, I, honestly, all jacks aside, all jacks aside, you, you walk around with the sheikh, my sheikh, and a jannantu, right? He's got gray hair by now. But you walk around with someone, and heck, you know what? Every 10, 15 minutes, they're going to share some aikum. Right? That's not my brand. I'm not one, bro. Rasulullah, when someone would give him salam, imagine there was no one busier than the Prophet of Allah, no one. Yet they would give him salam, he would continue to shake their hand until they pulled their hand off. Every single companion thought that the Prophet of Allah loved him the most. He would never turn his face. He would turn his whole body, he would give you his shoulders, his attention. One of the companions comes to the Prophet of Allah, heck, and he's wanting to show the boys. He was so convinced that, that Khalas Rasulullah loves me the most, bro. I'm telling you. So he comes to the Prophet of Allah, all the boys are there. He says, oh, Prophet of Allah, who do you love the most, man? <laughs> he says, Aisha. <laughs> oh, the sisters love the all. <laughs> so he's thinking, so he's thinking, time up. Just this, bro. Oh, no, no, this is not finished. Alright? Hey, you see that laptop there with the numbers on it? Honestly, if you ever on a plane and you don't want that person sitting next to you with a beard, open up the laptop and put a countdown on it, bro. He will run. He will do the vault. Anyway, so the companion says, he says, our Prophet of Allah loves the most. He says, he says, I love Aisha. So he's thinking, Prophet of Allah, I'm here from the boys. He says, her father. His companion was so confident, he actually asked. So my brothers, my time is up. Allah, what we need is not huge lectures and mashallah. Spread the love, man. Allah, he gives salams to one another. When you give salams, it, 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 it breaks pride, it breaks ego. It humbles the hearts. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring this quality into our lives. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us all, to unite us all once more, inshallah ta'ala. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanahu wa ta'ala.